We're Hassani and Danielle Pettiford, and we're a real couple with real problems who almost called it quits. I was very frustrated. I became very disconnected, very um, jaded and, and cold. We have four children going on 20 years of marriage, and we practice what we preach. Our mission, to change the way couples relate to one another and teach them the skills needed to improve the quality of their relationships. This, this is the Couples, Couples Academy, Academy Show. Show. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Couples Academy Show. My name is Asani. My name is Roland. And we're here this morning to have a conversation with you. Glad to see all of you are tuning in from all over the world. We love to know what city, what state, what country you're representing so that we can acknowledge you. And we appreciate the fact that you tune in. You're consistent. You come every single morning. For some of you, it's evening. For some of you, it's afternoon. But it speaks to your commitment to want more for your life and for your relationship. And that's what we're committed to doing today. We're going to dive into a new topic today, an important topic that, you know, many people have been talking about over the years. I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about what this actually is. So we want to comprehensively break this down over the next couple of episodes so that you have a foundation uh, that you can learn and grow from. So we're talking about what is trauma bonding? That's a term that has been used so loosely, so carefree, much like narcissism, much like friend. We use these words and don't truly understand what they mean or what they look like. And so we're going to walk through that today. But before we do that, quick announcement, last chance weekend, December 9th through the 11th, uh, people are calling and registering. This is the last one for the year. Uh, it always happens like this, like this, this surge that happens towards the end of the year. Uh, but there is space left. We want you to engage. It's going to be phenomenal, spectacular. Uh, so if you've never heard of it, maybe if you've heard us talk about it uh, to to like daily, it's because it's the, the the major the major thing that we engage in that has the most impact for couples. But if you're new to the channel, if you've never seen it before, check out this and we'll get into today's topic right after this quick video. That's right. That's the last chance weekend. You have an opportunity to be involved in a powerful weekend experience that can be transformational as you enter into 2023. My question is, do you want to have the same relationship you have today in 2023? Do you want to sign up for more of the same in the year to come or do you want something different? It's a new year. It could be a new you. It could be a new marriage. And you have to be responsible for making that happen. Nothing's going to happen on December 31st at 11.59 p.m. And as this clock strikes 12, you're not going to go through a metamorphosis and a transformation just because it's a new year. You have to be intentional. You have to be willing. You have to do the necessary work. And you can bring about a change and a transformation. And that's what The Last Chance Weekend is about. So make sure you click on the link in the description. You register today. Good morning, Cali Power Couple from California. Stephanie N. Ty. Darnell, Tiffany, Camille, uh, Facebook user, Daisy from Kenya. I love it. I love it. We're all over the country. We're in Virginia, South Carolina, uh, Australia. I love it. The community is growing and growing and growing. So let's dive into today's topic. We're talking about trauma bonding. Now, let's just keep it real. Okay, so trauma bonding, I think there's a misunderstanding. Many people have the idea that trauma bonding means Two people who come from trauma, 
possibly similar trauma because I've heard this explained through couples before. You know, my dad died when I was 12 years old and, you know, I met Susie and, you know, her mom died when she was 18 years old and we both suffered this loss. So we have a shared common experience and we've come together to support each other in that process. And so they've defined that as trauma bonding. We're bonding around our trauma. And that is not what trauma bonding is. That may be something else, but that's not trauma bonding. Trauma bonding is actually a term that was created in 1997 uh, by Dr. Patrick Carnes. This is an individual who was a specialist in addiction therapy. And what he discovered is that many people formed relationships based upon trauma, but it showed up in a different way. He wrote a book called Trauma Bonds, Why People Bond to Those Who Hurt Them. Now think about Stock, Stockholm Syndrome. Many of you are familiar with that. Stockholm syndrome is when, let me give you an example. I am a kidnapper. I kidnap you, okay? And I keep you in a cave or keep you in the basement of a home for three months. And during that process, you, as the one who's being kidnapped, gains um, an emotional attachment and connection to me. So I'm the abuser, you're the one being abused, and there's a relationship that's formed through that trauma. OK, so we've seen the same thing play out in a number of different scenarios, but that's what Stockholm syndrome is. And so trauma bonding is much like that. You're in a relationship with someone. One plays the role of the abuser. One plays the role of the abused. And there's this connection. There's this attachment. I can't let you go, even though you are the abuser of me. That's what trauma bonding is. Roland, jump in. Yeah, and we we see it. You can you can. It happens in the blink of an eye. Like we don't realize that that's what it really is, and we find ourselves attached to these situations. We've heard so many stories, you know, of women being um, uh, abducted and locked down in basements or locked in rooms for a long period of time, and we're asking ourselves, well, how could that happen? How? I'm I mean, how could they let that happen? But and they were in that position of trauma binding where they got an attachment to the person that had abducted, abducted them. And then they found themselves, whether they say fall, falling in love or this person cares for me or this person is protecting me. And it's a sign of manipulation or brainwashing. And then you realize what is bad. They have made it a good thing. And you don't even realize that you're trapped in danger. And then the time goes by, you don't even realize how long you've been trapped in danger. And so oftentimes, you know, one day turns into one week, turns into one month. And now you're two years trapped in something that you didn't even realize you were in trauma bonding. You know, a very popular case of trauma bonding that we could all identify with is the R. Kelly case. This is a gentleman who, uh, had an attraction for younger women, uh, pulled them in with the promise and hope that maybe their careers uh, would take off if they connected to him, brought them into his home. I mean, many of you have seen the documentary or if you've read articles or some of you have followed the case. And so there was this emotional attachment that these young girls had for R. Kelly, but he was very abusive, took advantage of them, went to prison. And I just found out literally a couple of days ago that it's been appealed and he's actually coming out. Did you know that, Roland? I, I didn't know that. I, yeah. I thought the the singing bird um, was caged and 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 put away. I did not realize that. Yeah, as far as I know, he's coming out. He's being released, and so it's interesting. But yeah, that would be a public example of trauma bonding. But let's talk about some of the signs, some of the signs of what happens when you're in this type of relationship, and we see it all the time. And the signs really show up in the abused in terms of how they respond to the abuser. So for instance, like an abused victim who is suffering from trauma, the trauma bonding, they will cover up or make excuses uh, to other people about the, the abuse that they're facing uh, in their relationship. Like oftentimes they will blame themselves, right? And they will cover the abuser. It's so interesting that society has tended to do this for so long. We victimize the victim and we protect and excuse and justify the behavior of the abused. And in this relationship, this is exactly what uh, the betrayed partner or the abused partner actually does. 
And, and so often we, it's overlooked because we look at things because, oh, they're treating me nice or they're giving me gifts or, you know, they're taking care of me. And it, it, it's, it's very unfortunate because these are things, are material things that sway um, people that are, have been abducted, that sway them into covering up for the abuser, right? We we look at them and they're taking care of me. Like, why would I tell on them? Or they find out what the, what the abuse like, and that's what they play on. Right. If you if it's certain items, well, I'm gonna get you a new bag, or I'm gonna get you the red bottoms, or I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, and and that feeds them, right? And they stay in that that the cycle, as you said, of manipulation, and they they find themselves thinking that it's a good thing when really, you know, it's 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 not good. It reminds me of that movie. What's love got to do? Yes. Got yes, to do with it. You yes, remember that? That was yes. Tina Turner and Ike. And in that movie, you saw trauma bonding on the silver screen. I remember there were opportunities where on Ike would beat the snot out of Tina Turner. And she was yeah. like, a, she was bleeding. She, she was a wreck. And yes. so she went to her room. She fell asleep because she was in so much pain. And then in the middle of the night, Ike brings a big box gift mm -hmm. with a big bow on top and slides it to the edge of the bed as a way to make up for the damage. And so that's what they do. They, they, they abuse, then they love bomb you, right? Yes. They oversaturate you with love and affection and care after mm -hmm. they've just beat you or emotionally abused you or verbally attacked you. And that becomes the trauma, right? Because you're like, well, I, who am I dealing with? Are you really the abuser or are you really the lover? And should I excuse your abuse because you're the lover? Should I ignore your love because you're an abuser? It could become very confusing for the person who's being abused. It, it's mental, Excellent. emotional torture that's taking place. And it kind of leads into the next one. Like the abuse victim will often lie to his or her friends and family about the abuse. They'll not only make excuses, but they'll lie. They'll deny that it's even happened. I see bumps and bruises and scars and Band-Aids and black eyes and, oh, but I ran into a door. I tripped over a shoot, like all types of craziness to once again, cover and protect the abuser. Listen, the question was asked, what does love have to do with it? Everything. Love does not hurt. Love does not abuse. Love does not make you lie to other people about what you're going through. Love does not do those things. And what happens is so oftentimes we find ourselves lying because we don't want our friends and family to look at him or look at her differently. Right. So we we put this on. We put this facade on. We protect. We cover up everything that's going on. We don't show up to family functions. Right. And uh, are we, we, we show up alone. And then we're trying to figure out, well, where's so and so? And where's so? And, oh, oh, he had to work. Oh, she's not feeling well. This lying and protecting the fact that you're being abused, you're covering up, and that is not love. Love will not put you in that position to put your back up against a wall and make you feel some kind of way. So, powerful, it, powerful. It, it, you have to move away from that. Powerful point. A um, A says, uh, my spouse does this now because of the affair. He never used to do this before. This is why I don't believe that he's a changed man. Well, let me tell you, change takes place through a process, through a methodology. And so, you know what, for somebody to be exposed for an affair to come out and then to say, I'm sorry, and let's just move on. But there has been no recovery process, then change is not going to happen but the inevitability of change takes place through a process. So listen, guys, you're watching the Couples Academy show. We're talking about trauma bonding. We're just getting started. I hope that you're enjoying this conversation. We love the fact that you're weighing in. There's more to come. Stay right there. Be right back. When 45 men from all walks of life come together in one place for one purpose, there is a collective harmony that produces an amplification of power that leaves an impact on the lives of men that cannot be erased. A fraternity of legendary men, all at the tipping point, on the precipice of greatness, meeting for one weekend to turn their worlds inside out. For the first time ever, the Foundry Experience. Not an event, not a seminar or retreat, but an opportunity to come face to face with the man you were always destined to be. If you want a life that's better than the one that you are living, meet us January 2023 
for the Foundry experience. Welcome to the Couples Academy app. The Couples Academy app is your go-to hub for how to do marriage right. Get started with our app today by perusing our amazing features that conveniently allow you to connect. This app is packed with powerful content and resources to help you grow and stay connected. With this app, you can watch our messages, find marriage resources, Watch, listen, and read the real-life stories of restored couples. Sign up for events, read articles and blog posts, stay up to date with push notifications, share your favorite messages via Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or email, and download messages for offline listening. For more information about the Couples Academy app, go to couplesacademy.org. Hey guys, we're back. You're watching the Couples Academy show. We're talking about what is trauma bonding. The chats are blowing up. We're just going to go to some of these comments and then we'll get back into our points. Um, Denise says, when the behavior is covert, it's not always easy to tell that you are being emotionally abused or manipulated. And that's true. Like, it's almost like it's so subtle. It's so like clandestine. Like, is that abuse? Is that not? I'm feeling some type of way. Is it me? Is it you? Like, and then it's so covert that maybe it's not as noticeable to other people. So then when you talk about it, like uh, something wrong with you, are you crazy? Cause I don't see it. it because it's done in such a subtle way. And so some people are just that clever and just that good, or some people are completely oblivious to their bad behavior and they're, they're engaged in trauma bonding and aren't even aware of it because they've never heard the term before. It's almost like an emotional affair. When somebody is emotionally connected to someone else, they think they're not doing anything wrong because there's no physical interaction, but it's just as damaging. So I think out of ignorance, some people can engage in this, but also out of full awareness and intentionality, some people know exactly what they're doing. It, and unfortunately, real talk is calculated. Most times it's calculated because we want it to be subtle. We don't want you to realize that that's what's actually happening because as long as we can keep things afloat, then it looks good. You don't realize what's happening, but all the while we are compartmentalizing, we are minimizing, calculating everything that we're doing, every move that we make. And then you realize later on down the line when a lot of damage has been done, that that's what you are in. And unfortunately, um, men and women do this all the time. And we have to recognize it when it's happening and, and call it out. If you feel some kind of way, have that hard conversation with your spouse to let them know how you're feeling. Absolutely. Cool. The lover says, can a woman trauma bond with her affair partner? I think that's an excellent, excellent question. Whether a woman or a man, yes, a, a, a person can trauma bond with their affair partner. And to be quite honest, this is why so many struggle to get out of it. This is like, like, and, and this is no justification for someone being in something, but I just want to let you know, if you are the betrayed spouse, sometimes it's, it's, it's quite difficult to understand why it was so difficult for that person to leave. And oftentimes they feel trapped. They feel, so there's the love bombing, but then there's also the manipulation, the control, there's the threats that come. If you do, I will do. So they're constantly under the threat of exposure, the threat of of having their lives destroyed, of having things come out, and that keeps them trapped. And so many people think that, oh, all is well on the other side. You're just living it up and having a good time. But there's a lot that that person goes through um, in an affair relationship. So that's a great point. Yes, that is real. Anything you want to say to that, Roland? Yeah, and, and, and that's why it's so important to just stay in your lane because you don't know what you're getting into anytime you step outside of the marriage. 
there's so much that happens that we don't realize. Like you say, we're living our best lives or we're covering up. Nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to find out. But your best friend has a best friend who has a best friend. And what happens is you get attached to these situations outside of your marriage. You don't know what the outcome is going to be. You don't know what the other person is going to feel. So for you, it was entertainment for you. You know, it was a, a one night stand or whatever the case may be. But for the other person who you was not aware of, they have fallen in love. They have gotten attached. And now they can't let go. Um, I think it was uh, sleeping with the enemy, I believe, when the when a fair partner, you know, she she went to the extreme of torturing the family. You know, mm. she had taken the family pet and, and boiled it in water. I mean, she had gone to the extreme of what was supposed to be this, this nice, you know, it, it, listen, evil looks nice, right? Everything that glitter is not gold. So we have to stay away from trying, testing out to see if, you know, they're going to protect me. They, they're not going to do that. They're not that bad. And then you realize later on that you find yourself in a situation. Stay away from doing things that you know you have no business doing. Very good point. Tiffany says, when a spouse does this, is the marriage even worth staying as the betrayed? I don't know if it's worth it. Let me just say that oftentimes the knee-jerk reaction is to leave. And at the end of the day, many of you are watching this show right now. All of us as practitioners are leading this show right now. We counsel couples. We do all this type of work. Why? Because all of us at some point have done marriage wrong. And we've gone through a process to figure out how to do it right. The knee-jerk reaction shouldn't be to leave because some people just don't know how to do better. Okay? They just don't until they go through a process where they learn how to do better and course corrections are made. And so if any of you are kind of vacillating back and forth, should I stay, should I go? My question would be, what have you done to try to restore it? Have you gone to counseling? Have you taken a class? Have you done a retreat? Have you read a book? Have you listened to a sermon? Have you watched the show consistently? Have you done anything? If you haven't done anything, then you're not qualified to just leave. I mean, listen, you could do whatever you want to do, but I'm saying there's so many people who have been in this situation. There's so many people who have been betrayed, who have come back and been restored and their relationships have been better than what they were prior to the discovery of the affair. So there's still hope for you. And so my question is, what are you, what are you and your spouse going to do about the situation you're, you're in to change the dynamics of your relationship? Uh, GMB says, Tiffany, good question. Wanting to know the answer to that question myself. So I hope that gave you some clarity. Cali power couple. Some folks don't realize they are the abuser because it was done to them. One would think having been abused, one wouldn't abuse anyone else. But it, that's a very good point. Many people, you know, as they say, hurt people, people hurt people. Hurt people. We pass this thing down from generation to generation to generation because that's all that we know it's not about right or wrong it's what we've been exposed to and what we're used to and this is just what it is Roland yeah and and, and thank you guys for correcting me it's fatal attraction was that movie um that 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 I was speaking of but but that is that is a, that is a true thing that we don't even realize what's happening because and, and the other thing is we have not dealt with our own selves our own situations we have not looked at the man in the mirror the woman in the mirror to realize that I have been hurt this is what happened to me and as a result we constantly hurt our partners we hurt our spouses because it's been done to us and we have to start having real conversations with ourselves individually because as long as we are broken we're going to continue to break people around us we're going to break our families we're going to break our homes and that's the demise and that's the enemy's job to break up families if i can get to the head whichever is the head then everything else is going to fall apart so when we start having these hard conversations one with ourselves and realize where i've been where i am and we have to look at and be honest with where we want to go then we can start healing. We can start um, closing the circle of some things and breaking generational cycles. I cannot believe that we are out of time. This episode went by so quickly. But what we're going to do, we're going to pick up tomorrow and go into part two of this conversation because we're literally just scratching the surface. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you got something out of it. And let's let's engage tomorrow to further this conversation, to expose what trauma bonding is and to do whatever we need to do to kick it out of our homes. Listen, guys, this is the Couples Academy show. We love you. We appreciate you. And we will see you in the morning for another great episode. Take care.